English playwright, author and diarist Joe Orton shot to fame in the mid-1960s as the gay enfant terrible of the British theatre. Orton was wicked. He wanted to be wicked. Orton grew up in a working class family in the city of Leicester during and after the war. He wrote, wish I was a member of the Idle Rich. In 1951, he won a scholarship to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts and moved to London, where he met actor and collage artist Kenneth Halliwell. The pair became lovers and collaborated on several works that brought Orton's dark and cynical humour to life. They were both tremendously devoted to one another. The impoverished pair began a personal art project, defacing library book covers with collage, and were jailed for vandalism in 1962 as a result. There's one here, sometimes amusing, sometimes mildly obscene. Soon after their release in 1964, Orton got his big break when The Ruffian on the Stair was broadcast on BBC Radio. We were bosom friends. I hope I haven't shocked you. In the same year, Entertaining Mr Sloan became Orton's first West End production, gaining critical acclaim, going on to be staged around the world and adapted into a movie and TV play. A murder not brought to justice? That's a sobering thought. Orton's third production, Loot, failed to impress during its opening run, despite starring iconic British comedy actor Kenneth Williams. Orton's success enamoured him to London's influential gay theatrical elite. I didn't do it just on one book, I did it on hundreds. <laughs> and in 1966, after a ruthless rewrite, Loot was revived, getting rave reviews and becoming his most successful work. The theft of a pharaoh is something which hadn't crossed my mind. In spite of Loot's initial failure, Williams and Orton became very close, vacationing together with Halliwell in Tangier, well known as an open and tolerant holiday destination for gay men. While Orton's star ascended, Halliwell's crashed, with the increasingly jealous artist remaining in the shadows. His own lack of success and Orton's blatant promiscuity impacting on his emotional stability. And there was sort of jealousy and anger. Orton's screenplay for Up Against It was written especially for the Beatles, under Halliwell's title Prick Up Your Ears, which Orton rejected as too good for the movie. And his final play, What the Butler Saw, caused a scandal over its climatic presentation of Winston Churchill's penis. Helen Dunn Cannon had declared herself to be in love with a man, and as you know, the club is primarily for lesbians. On August 9, 1967, Orton's life and career were cut short in a brutal murder suicide at the hands of Kenneth Halliwell, sending shockwaves around the world. Interest in Orton's work increased after his death. What the Butler Saw debuted in the West End in 1969. I hardly ever have sexual intercourse. You were born with your legs apart. And in 1978, John La published the biography Prick Up Your Ears, which Orton's contemporary Alan Bennett adapted into a screenplay starring Gary Oldman and Alfred Molina. I wrote it. I gave you the title! So when they have awards for titles, you can go to that. Orton's life and work continue to shock and delight audiences while his bold and unapologetic openness about his sexuality, at a time before being gay was legal, resonates even today.